Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a, another short little unboxing to share with you guys. I don't know why I'm talking in staccato. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is a weird intro. <laughs> This is a, um, this is a heavy box. There's a uh, there's a big knife in here, and I'm really excited to get it out. I've had a lot of caffeine. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So this was sent by Artisan Cutlery, and I think I know what it is. They also sent another box in that package, but if this is what I think it is, it definitely deserves its own video. We'll get to the other box on another day. Um, so I'll, I'll do my best to link any and all information about this knife down in the description. It depends on when you're watching it. Uh, if they actually released it, I'll do my best to have everything down there. So check it out. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and get in here. This, I think, God, I don't want to say, cause what, sometimes I do this and I'm like, oh, it's, it's definitely going to be this. And then I, it ends up being something totally different. If it is what I think, there's no way it's anything else. This is, it's so heavy. <laughs> it's going to be a blast from the past. <laughs> oh, are you yes oh my gosh <laughs> it's huge oh wow <laughs> okay and this is the newest artisan cutlery proponent in titanium oh my god what a freaking monster do you guys remember this knife from the oh, i've never handled the premium version now, I don't know what, God, they have, they must have the new sand wash on it. Jeez, that looks so good. S35EN, I always forget this is Dirk Pinkerton. So this is kind of like, <laughs> for, I, I'm glad these are coming back because I remember when these were first available and everyone was like, that's weird, that's weird. And then they were gone and there was a massive flood, flood of people. And I know this because I got constant daily questions. Where do I buy that? Where do I buy that? Where do I buy that? And the version that I had shown was gone. And all, you know, a lot of the other versions were also gone. I feel like there have been versions of the smaller and larger one that are still in stock in like G10 or my Carter or something like that. I will try and link every available version of this knife that I possibly can. But this is clearly the newest version. Look at that blade. Um, we almost have a mirror polished fuller and then we have machine satin flats. And then this is definitely their new, I think they're calling that sand wash, uh, the new sand wash on the blade itself. So this is a massive oversized <laughs> titanium frame lock. And you know what? I am almost certain. Yeah, there it is. The key, right? Um, so these types of knives, there's lots of, uh, you know, knives that have utilized this secondary stop pin design. But what this does is it creates an additional point of contact. The knife can no longer dis... I mean, it's already got a frame lock, which is a strong lock, right? But um, uh, there's another company, I think it was the Hephaestus, that operates the same way. Titanium frame lock, secondary optional stop pin, you screw it in. Um, these are unbelievably durable. This is not a... It's not a question of like, well, maybe, right? Because the cold steel trad lock always comes up. It's the same idea. It's the number of contact points and what's preventing the blade from disengaging. With another quarter inch stop and the frame lock and the fact that the back of the blade is contacting another oversized stop, it's not going to disengage, right? So while these are these types of knives are massively over the top and generally overkill, right? We don't need to point out that there are more convenient knives that exist that's obvious, right? But if you want to know, will this stand up to crazy abuse? Yes. Should you do that with a knife? No. But can it? Absolutely. It definitely can. There's not, I mean, you'd have to do, you'd have to put it in a vise and beat on the blade with a sledgehammer to get it to break. That's all you can do at this point, right? Um, so the only thing that's going to be more durable is a fixed blade of similar dimensions, right? Um, so this is wild. Now, I don't think too many people are going to be taking those things out there and doing that, right? But I um, <laughs> just can't believe this full titanium S30V version of it. Um, 
You know, I remember back, the detent is so nice in this too. We have this giant thumb studs. Everything feels great, by the way. Everything feels really good. Artisan Cutlery has truly come a long ways. You know, the last time that I handled the proponent, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, it was the, the brass proponent. And it was really cool and massive, but there were little things that were just not super impressive. Like on their pivots, they had the, like they had a, some like marring and, you know, kind of goofiness here and there. And I'm not seeing that anymore. Same with the pocket clip screws and the edges of things. You know, it was built well, but there were little issues. There was like lock rock issues sometimes. And Artisan Cutlery has thoroughly worked that stuff out. A lot of times detent lash was present on this stuff. No, really, um, they, they really have just brought everything up to what you expect. Now, I don't know how much this is going to run, but versus other things, uh, you know, that are in the same tier, Artisan Cutlery tends to be a bit lower. Despite it being a gigantic and pretty thick blade, that's at least 187 thousandths, you can see it's pretty readily slicing this paper. We've got quite a long ways to drop down towards the edge. I mean, I'm not going to call that a thin edge by any mean, but uh, by any means, but will it work? Oh yes, absolutely. Are we actually milled out on the inside or is it solid? Nope. Really? Solid titanium scales on both sides. Wow. Should we do some size comparisons so you guys can get an idea of what we're looking at here? Got everything folded up in the burrito. I use the NAFS burrito. Now, this is where I keep all the size comparison knives. It's actually really handy. Huh. Should we do, how about up against another popular knife that's made by the same company or CJRB, which is company under um, RC Cutlery. Yeah, it's pretty big. Why Why this knife for size comparison? I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense. I think the first thing we should do is probably measure it. Let's do that. Well, it's huge. Uh, 8.85 8 inches. Blade length is 4, maybe. 3.9. Cutting edge is 3.75. Yeah, it's a big knife. How about uh, up against some larger knives? Here's, a, here's the, the one that would make more sense. The large pyrite. Um, the Ontario Rat 1, right? It is a little larger than the Rat 1 if we're getting them right butt to butt. Because what's the Rat 1? 8, 8.5, 8 8.6. And what's another larger knife? Could do the Spyderco PM2 might be a good one. There we go. Yeah, pretty, pretty big. I think it goes without saying. You guys probably didn't need the size comparisons, but... We'll weigh it just for fun. Obviously, this is still going to weigh less than the um, brass one from a long time ago. Can't remember what that thing weighed, but it was huge. Um, yeah, it still weighs 10 and a half ounces. <laughs> I do like the frag texturing on there. That's really nice. Um, for a lot of people with the, you know, maybe you have recently caught or have had the overbuilt bug, right? It's a thing. It's a real thing. Some people get really super interested in these big crazy overbuilt knives i absolutely love them as much as i love a good practical knife i also love a good freaking honking ridiculous chunk of freaking titanium and steel it's i don't know what the deal is with it but it's just funny to me it's cool it feels good um this is going to be one of the least expensive alternatives out there because a lot of you know like people i think often they find medford and they're like oh cool oh wait it's like hundreds if not you know multiple thousands in some cases and then you find some other brands that are doing some cool overbuilt stuff max ace and riot right but it's still multiple hundreds of dollars um and in this case you know you can get something like um this knife for substantially less and have it still be made out of titanium or go with some of the less expensive alternatives but if you didn't know about the proponent it's definitely one of the wildest looking uh <laughs> knives out there especially in the you know like when it comes to overbuilt stuff it's definitely one that um will grab your attention you won't forget it after you see it once but it's really cool to see them adding this finish especially on that fuller god that's beautiful uh, on these knives so anyways very cool uh since it is an, a newer version i've never rev i've not talked about this knife for years um and since it, it seems to be updated on many fronts in terms of overall quality. I will do another review of this. So expect to see a full comprehensive review. In the meantime, I will link this knife right down below if you want to check it out. Thanks again to Artisan Color for sending it in. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have 
Lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.